Hello everyone, it's a very special boot camp because Office Hours is here with you in the morning. Hi Nick. Is it Wednesday? It's, 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 <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's not a Friday at 2.30. Um, it feels so odd, but this is great. This is true. Nick, do you want to go ahead and enjoy here. yourself and also tell our friends a little bit about what Office Hours is because we're out of our normal zone, we're in I a know, part of this community true. boot camp. What is Office Hours? Yeah, Office Hours is a weekly meetup, let's call it, every Friday right here on Adobe Live at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. We've been on for a good two, oh, we two years. Two years, yeah, at, over two years. Kind of two years. And uh, we've been here just talking everything creative. We've had three to five seasons of fun stuff. We've sprinkling in a lot of other things like Adobe Max coverage and you name it. But today we're here for something really kind of cool as well. Tell yeah. us a little bit about it. So we're doing community bootcamp this week here on Adobe Live. Yesterday you saw Wade Acuff and Galvasaur and Cloverkin. Um, and we are going to be hanging out with you today talking about student stuff. We're gonna be talking about how, how to student. Um, we're talking about uh, helping you as, an, uh, as a creative, uh, even if you are leveling up and you are a student of a profession, you're learning in your professional career, we wanna help you out. Um, and Nick, this is going to be a short show. Uh, we only got 30 minutes. Nick and I are used to doing an hour show. So we're going to hang out. We got a lot to get through today. Well, um, super fast. Yes. <laughs> and if you want to, Nick, can you point right above us real quick? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, They're right there. there. Click on the title of this video. Go subscribe to the Adobe Live channel and make sure that you join us this Friday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time right here, behance.net slash Adobe Live. Yeah. Uh, and we're talking all about Max on Friday. So you want to tune in for that. Um, also, it was too late, but if you want to skip through something in here, you can hit control right if you're watching the replay and you can find a topic that is relevant to you through the video. There's also chapter markers that you can hover over. We do talk a lot on office hours, so I want to give you the option to skip over any things that are not interesting to you. <laughs> and you hit the skip and you're going to take you, it's going to take you right to here. It's exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and hop in here. We're talking about how to student today. Uh, there's a lot of questions that we have submitted from our community and a lot of questions that have been submitted from even other students at other schools. Yeah. And Nick, when we're talking about our community, where can people join that glorious community? Right over there, our little Discord link. And there's the preview of our fantastic little community going strong, everybody there. Um, it's a great place to just not only kind of chat with all the folks, but yeah. Post some homework. Yeah. You'll see what we're talking about. Join us over there. Um, all right. Yeah. So let's talk about how to student and let's get started with, we got five tips, our top five tips for being a creative student. Learn alone. This is my favorite one. And this is to take time to choose things that you are interested in and learn on your own time. I loved the school that I went to for design. I learned 20% probably of what I know about design from school. Yeah. The rest was outside projects, looking at tutorials, um, visiting inspiration websites. I used to go to Abdezidu was like the big mm -hmm. one that I would go to. Um, and I tried to challenge myself with things that I wanted to do on my own time. Uh, That's a great point. Nick, do you see your students do this? And by the way, Nick and I are both educators. Nick teaches at uh, CSUN. Uh, Cal, yes, State Cal State Northridge here Northridge. in LA. Yeah. So Nick, do you see students doing this on their own time? What's kind of your take uh, on learning alone? I think you need everyone needs a reminder for this. I think don't rely on school to be the only source. I think you nailed it by saying five, 10 years into your career, what you learned was maybe 10 to 15 to 20% max at school. Everything else comes from what you take on on your own. Yes. So by learn alone here, I think the, the point is take on more than what you're getting at school. You'll be more well-rounded. You'll be more situated for that great job for the interview process will be so much easier for you because you're going to have so much great stuff to stay to say. So I, I totally agree on this, but I think everyone needs that reminder. Yep. And even if you are somebody who's not a student, who's in a creative career, this is mm -hmm. still a fantastic way Always. to approach your work is have something on the side, right? Do your job, but then uh, on a weekend, on a night, watching Netflix, have something that you're learning on your own time and you're able to try something new. Uh, all right. Totally good idea. Love I've got that. a good story for this one. So next up, yeah. number two, Nick, what's our number two tip? <laughs> Always ask questions. I say this every night in my lecture. There are no bad questions. In fact, if you ask a question, chances are somebody else is thinking the same thing yes. and they're going to thank you and maybe they'll do it the next time. Right. But asking a lot of these is so crucial because I think that's why we're all here. Like I, sometimes I'll ask any questions and it's crickets and I'm like, 
come on guys, there's gotta be something here. And all this is gonna do is help you kind of leverage that knowledge and understand it even better. Yep, and if you, yeah. uh, speaking of questions, if you ever have yeah. questions, go ahead and drop them, oh, oh, wrong way. Drop them over in that chat right over there if you're watching the live show. And if you are watching on YouTube, drop them down in the comments down below. Yes. We check them every now and then, we'll answer your questions. And especially if you're watching the live show, we have all of your questions. We love to answer them. We love to talk. Um, even on Fridays on Office Hours, 2.30 yeah. p.m. Pacific time here on Behance.net slash live. Um, shameless plugs all day. So yes, I think asking <laughs> questions is essential. And I have a great story about this. So uh, there's a guy named Otmar Mergenthaler. He was the inventor of something that was a linotype machine. Um, and the linotype machine, he wanted to... Uh, learn how it worked better, right? There was a, there was an employee, I'm trying to think, I think that he was using a press, but he wanted to learn mm -hmm. more about uh, linotype machines. And he would take apart the entire machine just so that on lunch, like after lunch, the his boss would come back and see the machine was like destroyed. And then you have to put it back together and you can learn how it worked, right? And so he would ask questions as he built it. And he's like, wait, why does that go there? Why does that go there? Right? And he'd take it apart just so you could ask questions to learn a little bit better. And so I think that's just yeah. a great story of like, ask questions and you'll learn stuff and you'll hopefully get knowledge uh, through questions. Can, can I also mention, you're going to help out the teacher tremendously. Yes. Oh my gosh, the teacher, please. A good teacher wants questions. All so, the time ask them yes <laughs> it's so true yes uh, all right so let's talk about should versus could this is a big one uh and this is something that in, even in my career i still go uh and kind of address this and try to mm -hmm. think through every project in this yeah. light learn to bend assignments to better aid your passions and learning journey right what should i do versus what could i do if we're getting a project, if we're getting an assignment, if we're working through something in class, how can you take that project and make your own, right? We love your yeah. professors, we love what they're teaching you, we love your teachers, but sometimes you need to push back a little bit and sometimes you need to see how much you can bend the assignment, try something new and make it your own. Uh, do, yes. you, do you see this in your students, Nick? Well, I demand it. <laughs> my, right. my projects <laughs> are made to be bent, I guess is a great way to say it. They are given quite the the outline of what it should be, but they get to pick and choose specifics and applications and cool things in there to bend to maybe what they want to go to in the future or something they're lacking. Like, so I always tell them, pick something here that's going to be, that's not there in your portfolio just yet, right? Yes. Are, are you too, are, if you have too many things that are in the cute, whimsical, colorful, whatever, and you need something a little more corporate, a little bit more dark or something, whatever it might be to balance it, they get that that's that choice here as well. But I think you could think of it beyond just particular assignments, right? You could do this in the way you are on social media, the way you present yourself, the way you market yep. yourself. Do something a little bit different. Don't be like, why be like everybody else and follow, yep. you know? Yeah, and I think that it's a good opportunity to think about what do I need for my portfolio and what am I passionate about, right? Either of those two yeah. can be the question that you can shift and change to round out your portfolio, to do a project you've been wanting to do, or something that you're just excited about uh, to kind of figure out how do I make all of those things my own? Great point. Uh, we yeah. do have somebody saying hi in the live chat, which if someone says hi, I say hi back. Hi, uh, David uh, Plasic. Let's call that. I like guessing yeah. names. Uh, hi, thanks good for job. joining us over here. Uh, it's going to be a good time. All right, Nick, next up, what do we want to uh, do with our portfolios? This, what do we want to do with our work? Number one asked question topic we talk about all the time is this idea of standing out and yes. exploring and learning your voice. Really, as the creative, that gives you at least the platform or something to put up there and present yourself with that's a little bit different. Yep. And again, there are no wrong ways. And I think that's the coolest part. Like, we'll try to get something creative in there that is maybe not seen or heard out there in the per current kind of like climate of creatives or particularly young creatives. You want to stand out. You want to have something different. I think that's to me the best thing. You can get this by talking with people, asking them maybe specifics about, hey, is there something I'm doing with my work that you see that I'm not quite maybe taking advantage of yes. or using as my pedestal? So I know from the conversations we had in previous episodes, you told me a lot that my social media or at least my my uh, website at the time felt very corporate and very kind of like, you know, confident. But I was like, you know, I do want to have a little bit more kind of balance with that as well, not come off so far that I could scare someone off. So again, 
finding those things to stand out on are super important. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I forgot that we did a, a portfolio roast. That was one of my favorite oh, episodes. Yeah. We need to do that again sometime. I know. Um, that was, that, 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 <laughs> nothing's but, changed. Nothing's changed. <laughs> but that is a great way to get feedback and to grow your skills as a student is to ask your classmates, right? And even people that you are like, we're, we're all learning together, right? Just there are people mm -hmm. in your class together. They might have an insight that you just don't see, right? They can see all your blind spots, um, yeah. right? They've got your back. They can see all of the, the pieces that you may not know. Right. And I love that episode because Nick pointed out things in my portfolio that I was like, I would have never thought about that. Right. Oh, I, yeah, I right. never would have seen that. Asking somebody for that feedback is so important to help you stand out and kind of find your voice. Yeah, um, add a, add a non-creative to that too, because yes. I think creatives are in such a bubble. We all look at something, oh yeah, perfect case study. But a non-creative could look at something and be like, isn't there a missing spot here? Like I'm, I'm not seeing the bridge from this to this. And that's great because maybe a non-creative might be the first person looking at your portfolio. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and Elizabeth Mock in our live chat is saying portfolio reviews are how office hours got started. It is true. We used to just do portfolio reviews. Um, we'll probably bring it back at some point to give you all feedback. If you want to see that, comment below or send us a, an email down here, adobeofficehours at gmail.com. Yeah, let's get back into that. Uh, let us know. If, or if you want to send your portfolio through, send it back through. Uh, all right. Let's continue on here as we only have a few minutes left. We have like 20 minutes. Oh, my God. Uh, we actually only have 15 minutes. All right. So student work. Who's that? We don't know her. We don't know student work. We've never seen student, student work. Student work doesn't exist. Student work doesn't exist, right? Work. You, you know what does exist? Work. Work. <laughs> yes. You need to... Hold on. Let me get to the... Okay. You. You student. You're not doing student work. You need to get rid of the student work talk from your vocabulary. If I am talking about someone's work and I said that this looks like student work, I'm basically just saying that it's not great, uh, right? Yes. It, it just looks like it's like, oh, it's not looking good. It's not something you should say, oh, yes, this is my student work because that makes yeah. me feel like, oh, I already hate it. Um, yeah. Nick, what do we do instead of calling it student work? How do we present it? Uh, it's just work. <laughs> it is your work. It is the work you are the most proud to show. It is the work you want to show to impress whoever is looking at it. Also, take off freelance work. Take out contracted work. Work is work is work. Yes. Does it matter, right? So I know a lot of times people are fearful of asking, can I take student off? Yes, please do. Yes. If you're asked, where did you do it? Obviously, be truthful. That was a class project, but I took it to another level because I bent it. In a you know in a few slides ago. <laughs> yes, <laughs> See exactly. What I mean? Right. Yeah. Um. All right. So that's it for our five tips that we have for you. We got about ten minutes left, and so we want to take some questions. We reached out that's to great. our community, and we got some questions in from actual students. Um. We've got a couple questions here. I'm gonna go ahead. Let me open this real quick. We've got a question from a couple students from UCF, University of Central Florida. Um. And Nick, let's start with the most chaotic one first, just because it oh, makes yeah. me so happy. All right. Go. So here we go. This is from our friend Azim. There we go. That's how we start it. Let me go ahead and mute this music real quick so we can hear. All right. So here is a question from uh, Azim. Hi. I was wondering if you recommend including your resume within your portfolio. All right. So question from Azim. Do we think that you should include your resume in your portfolio? Nick, what is your take on that? Chances, you can't hurt. No one, it, chances are they've seen your resume before they probably are reviewing your portfolio with you live or even on their own time. Um, if it's a digital on a website, always have a resume area for sure. I, I would think that's a great idea. Have a mini portfolio, a downloadable PDF with a combination resume and maybe five of your best visuals. That's a great thing to do as well. What do you think? I wouldn't mind like an intro page to the portfolio that has not necessarily resume, but something that's personable that has kind of an overview of maybe justifying your qualifications, but yeah. maybe a little bit about you, what you've done, your perspective, that kind of thing. I'd rather see almost like an artist statement than a, yeah. a, like yeah. a full resume. Um, I think maybe that's putting a, a resume one. in the back might work. But if you're doing something, I would do like a little description intro slide that talks about some accomplishments, maybe nothing too crazy, but something that just like gives the idea of a resume without throwing resume. I think the creative industry, 
I think resumes are not as relevant, right? It's all about present- presentation. It's all about the work. Uh, yeah. And so I think that you could get away with not doing that or just having a version of that at the front. It can't hurt. I it guess can't hurt. the best way to say it too. Yes. Yeah. If you do it tastefully and you have a good overview page at the front, it can't hurt. If anything, they'll just skip over it, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I do at the front, one page, probably all white or something that's branded in your brand if you're presenting that way. And just a little overview, just a quick little, here's what I've done and here's what I've accomplished. My all right. Totally oh, agree. I started the video too early. I'm going to sneeze. Oh. And th- there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alive. All right. Um, so here's another question we had come in. Uh, and this is as well from University of Central Florida. Let's go ahead and come over here. This is a good question. Uh, let's go and jump into it. My question is, how do you guys keep yourself from being creative and not copying and pasting what you see on Pinterest? Because a lot of portfolios I see kind of look like one another. So I'm trying to see how to make it different. Thank you. All right, so the question there was, uh, a lot of portfolios that we see are just copied from sites, from Behance, everything looks the same, right? How do you separate yourself from all of the noise? God, we can spend a whole season on that question. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Because you obviously want to blend, uh, you want to show you're aware of what's now and what's maybe, let's even use the trend word, But you also, if you could throw in an element of surprise and something that is very uncommon and new and unique, don't make the whole portfolio of that, but get in one or two that have that kind of cutting edge, something we haven't seen thing, then I feel like it's a good balance. Um, As much as I think a professional should not have some of the cut and paste of everything you see in trends right now, I think a student, it might not hurt to have that combo. What do you think? I think that trends come from like peers and not necessarily like employers, right? I don't think employers care about trends um, or like, oh my, it's like, oh, this portfolio looks like, I mean, if it looks too old, maybe, but I don't think chasing trends, I think that that's like a designer thing that like we all see trends and we're like, oh, we all have to like Mm -hmm. do the same trend. Uh, I'd say like figure out what is your own twist on a trend if you want to take the trend route. Uh, how are you going to reinvent that trend or like take a unique perspective on it? Um, yeah. Especially for your portfolio, I think that there are ways that it needs to be structured, right? There are rules that you have to have for your portfolio. You want to be structured, you want to have projects in there, you want to showcase them well, have good case studies, uh, put some copy with it. but the way that you do that is open to interpretation, right? So know what the core elements are that you can't take away, and then you can play around with the rest and see what you can make using uh, kind of the rest of the elements that you could use in your portfolio. Yeah, I am fearful that people, even non-creatives, will see trends if they are the first, call it like gate to a job and they're looking at portfolios too and they see a lot of the same thing and they're not aware they might be like wow this looks like every other person i've seen now if it's the right aesthetic for that company or that particular job then you're probably in a good zone but i like what wade said too about someone putting a spin to a trend very similar to what you said too andrew is a great way to throw something in there that's like a personal stamp and it shows that you you did go a little extra mile rather than just copy and pasting something right off of, you know, what you can see all over the place as a trend online yep. somewhere. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So let's hop in. We're going to do a little rapid fire here. We've got about uh, seven minutes and I actually had a couple questions that came in from chat. That yeah, I they do. did. So let's go. Real quick. Let's, uh, let's do this question from Elizabeth, which I think is a common question from students. What is the optimal amount of projects to have in your portfolio when you show? If there's, if they're rock star level, case studies for minimum to me for minimum. Okay. I I think that will, that'd be enough for me to be like, yeah, I would say like whatever you need to be able to pitch it. I could, I I could see portfolios with three projects that I'd be totally fine with. Uh, I'd be like, yeah, I'm good. So I I would say suggest that I know that they usually say like 10 in school, oh. I, tens too much. Uh, I, I would rather have f- three to five really good case studies that are like multi-page than it's having 10 single projects, right? Uh, I want like a deep dive into that portfolio, really explain process. I would do maybe 
one or two, maybe three pages, probably not, but one or two pages uh, for a case study. And then I'd put in like three to five of those. Um, yeah. And yes, 10 was what they told me when I graduated. I had 10 projects in my portfolio. It was oh, wild. Well, th thank God we've been pushing this. And I think the industry wants to see it too, are these bigger case studies that allow you to, like you said, deep dive, show your process, show your strategy, give applications, showing it in the real world. Uh, my students are putting together their very first case study in project one right now. Yes. We're, we're, the average pages, 15 to 20. Ooh, those are deep dives. Because think about, you know, when we look at them on Behance, right? You stack 15 pages. That's like three spins of your, of your, your, you know, your mouse wheel there. Yep. It's, it's not that much. And I don't think you want to like start going. And then like all of a sudden it ends when you're in the flow. So that's Fair. why I was like <clears throat> that three to four is the magic number three to five. If you, if you said, if they're Fair. that good, yep. I, do you remember our, we had some really great uh, portfolio reviews together. And I remember someone seeing the first project from someone they're in page three and they're like, I'm, I'm sold. You, yep. you have sold me on page three of your first case study. It oh, can happen. And I've, yeah. And I've had portfolios at page two. I'm like, I'm bored. Like yeah. it, it's, yeah. it's all about how much you can sell. Um, yeah. Okay. Ooh, so, define a page. Can I say this real quick? Yes. Uh, Wade, imagine a stacked kind of illustrator or InDesign, you know, eight and a half by 11 document artboard that makes one long strip. So your eight and a half by 11 would be considered one page. Um, but it by no means do these look like pages that you're turning. It's more of we're building it in the one column scroll. Yep. And uh, I'm going to pull up your that goes fast uh, real quick. I'm going to pull up your Behance just so people can kind of see what we're talking about um, yes. is this is kind of that it's the the one long exactly. scroll, right? It so that one I think together. is about that's probably about eight pages and that's a really small one. But if you go to up to simply free at the top. Uh, is this your other? Is this the this the fake? Oh, that's my comp. That's my company. Nick you Longo. Gotta go to the, you got to go to the. Uh, yeah, you got to go to the um, individual. What are you? What are you it's just Longo. It's... it's just Longo. You just you got just Longo. I'm I know. Isn't that great? I was gonna say Nick's, uh, Nick's, I was like, <laughs> your case studies are so much better than this. Um, so there you go. So okay. This this is about ten to fifteen pages right here. Yes. Nick's case studies are insane. If you ever want inspiration, this is a oh, great. Okay. Literally, here's the thing go to like Nick's portfolio, go to a designer that you uh, love and then figure out how to adapt the like structure, the That's flow what I did. of theirs what I did. into your own style, right? That's not copying Pinterest. It's not just grabbing and plugging and playing. It's trying to adapt and understand what are they doing right and how are they communicating well? I love these little breakouts uh, yes, to show off the product. The yeah, thanks man. Yeah, I, I'm, I did the same thing. I looked to the people I admire. I looked at the people getting the jobs I wanted and look at their architecture, look at their presentation. To me, it's such a, it's like a game changer to put these together. And once you have it, you can place it everywhere, guys. And you can print this because they're pages. I can print this yep. and it looks just as good. You know? Please someone print a long scroll portfolio. That's just like a scroll. <laughs> that's what I want. Like it's, and, and it's got the, uh, what did the, 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 uh, the wire, uh, bounding on the top. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. hundred percent. hundred percent. All right. So let's, let's do, do a rapid fire on maybe some of these last questions. Cause we've got a couple oh, yeah, minutes. Go for it. Uh, we have two minutes, Nick. So we got rapid, rapid fire. Here we Ooh. go. First one, Nick graduation how do you best transition from being a student into an industry professional change your mindset change your mindset you have graduated you're in the industry you're part of it play that role don't yes. play the student anymore love it uh all right mm -hmm. next up generalist oh generalist do you need to be able to do everything or is it better to have a specific style of work Ooh, find your own Find your own balance between that. Yep. We're all different. I am a I am a generalist. I'll I'll say that 100. percent I want to be a specialist, but I am. A I generalist. think you are. Uh, I, I think you. I think you. Your side work and your fun stuff and the thing that you that make, drives you, you are a uh, you're a specialist. Yes. The things that I get excited about are specialists. <laughs> the things that I get paid for are generalists, which is fine. Uh, sometimes. But, uh, hey. Yeah. Sometimes balance. the work that you want to do is not the work that you're going to get hired for, and that's fine. Like keep it yeah. going and eventually you'll get hits on it, right? You won't get it as often as if you're a generalist, but if you're a specialist, sometimes you'll get the big jobs because you are a specialist, right? You'll miss yeah. out on a lot of generalist stuff for the specialist. All right, Nick, one minute left. Expanding, how do I build my portfolio if I only have projects that were single pieces? 
Well, if you have that single piece done, you've done all the work. It's just not in your portfolio. Objective, process, the logo, the brand, whatever it might be, application shots, conclusion, boom, you have a case study. Done. With some process in there, uh, skin, get some sketches in there. All there right, last one, positioning. How do I separate myself to get more jobs and charge higher rates? Get that money. Ooh, go for it. What do you think? Uh, I think that uh, your values and your perspective. So show people what your perspective is and how you see the world and approach problems. And that will allow you to get more jobs and to charge higher rates because people will pay for a unique perspective and a unique approach to their problems. I agree. Yeah. You're, and if you're in front of them and you're talking to them, you've got them. So yep. forget everybody else. It's just you and, the, and them. No one else. If they're bidding for someone with them, someone else, who cares? Yep. Who Go cares? Yep. All right. Thanks for joining us, Nick. Uh, it's Offset Week, so everybody stay tuned for more great content with Ryan Selvey. Nick, where can people watch us uh, this Friday? 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, right here on Adobe Live. Yes, Join we'll us. be talking all about Adobe Max, and hopefully we'll see some of you there. Yeah. Um, if we don't, have a great time. We're live every Friday, and we'll see you again for another episode of Office Hours a little bit later. Bye. See ya.